you done here. Okay, back again. Work on the S Rock. Stop the old preview over there. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going back to work on the S Rock. Well, sort of. I'm going to give up on the S Rock because I think the power supply is going bad. I think that's my problem. Uh, not 100% sure, but uh, last night when I was working on it, let me get on my desktop and I'll show you one little thing here. That's all I really got to show about it as far as what happened last night, uh, other than the previous video. But uh, right here, the uh, what had happened is it had, it, it had crashed the operating for door 26. Uh, that's what I'm running on it, and it had uh, crashed, or really, what you see is, I wish I had a screen, well, you can't get a screenshot of that, you have to take a picture with a camera, I'll probably have it at some point, but it's kind of, it's a blue screen, not a blue screen like Windows, but a blue, light blue background, about that color almost, so the top of that there, or this right here, where I've highlighted the IP address, I, um, but I was doing remote desktop with Team Viewer, so I didn't realize that's what had happened. I just thought I lost my, I thought it was something with my internet connection, you know. I lost my, uh, first I lost my connection on Team Viewer, and I was like, okay. And then I lost, I noticed my stream was down. I looked over at my laptop, stream was down. So I was trying to figure it out, and I went ahead and just rebooted the router. And then it, instead of coming up with a normal 1.2. whatever, you know, 168.0. whatever. I got this, which is, and, and then I got to notice, oh, that uh, vir, v -I -R -B, uh, virtual, let's see, was it virtual B, oh, I forgot now. Uh, that's a virtual network. That's not even my real network connection. Let me get out of here and I can show, oh, always hit there. Hit next escape doesn't go where you want to go. <laughs> now, how do I get back to the way I was? I don't remember, but I, it'll go back if I do this. Okay. Um, Connection information. Okay, so here's what I am right now. 192.0.192. See, and it was 122. Well, that v virtual network there interface uh, that's just, I don't know, Fedora just does that now. I've played with them and tried to use more than one network card. That's what you need to do when you're going to do that. Uh, if you wanted to, like, uh, turn your, your your server into an Internet appliance or just build an Internet appliance, basically a router, machine, you know, a computer that's a router and have, like, more than more than two two or more network cards, or NIC cards, what do you want to call them? <clears throat> uh, so anyway, see that's the address saying. So uh, that's all I had, and so I couldn't even talk to the router, couldn't do anything. Which let's get on the internet. So once uh, it dawned on me, well let's just shut. It. Let me check on that AS rock and let's just shut everything down. That uh, obviously I wasn't going to get my string back up. It was you know quite a while. <laughs> time had gone by there but I was still recording my video to the desktop like this so I didn't lose it and I just uploaded it this a while ago earlier this morning uh, or this afternoon it's actually almost five in the evening now the whole day is gone uh, because of all this stuff uh, the internet well I had uh, while it went out up the when I see an interesting video I just uploaded one uh, I, know I made two of them but I only uploaded one about uh, when you upload videos, when I upload videos to YouTube, it just kills my internet connection. And I went into that. That's all these screenshots are here and everything. But I won't go into that now. Uh, it's, a, it's in my uh, on my channel about that uh, and the uh, problem with that. And then it'll come back when the video is finished uploading. The video usually always finishes, but it just kills everything. It, it uses... And it, I think it's to do with my ISP charter spectrum. They call it spectrum now ISP. It's been doing it for years. I just since I just do live videos, I just haven't. I tried to get them to fix it a long time ago, years ago, but they never did fix it. They made it a little better once, but uh, they never fixed it. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, live stream. Okay, so um, my brain has just not been with it today. I'm going to go back to my camera now. Actually, I'll go to camera two. And uh, I'm going to get over here. And I think, I, I, I forgot the other day when I took that other, opened up that other power supply, that 450 watt, and, and tested it, and it worked. So then I put it back together and put it in the machine. Then it wouldn't work, the one that I, the old one I had taken out of mom's machine originally uh, and replaced it with a new 650 watt uh, 
it's definitely way more powerful than this one. It's 250 watts. So, but I'm not going to get off into. I mean, maybe I could actually fix that if all it has is one or two bad caps, and I, I could do that. Any other small components, I couldn't see. There's no way I could see to solder them, even if I knew which ones. But you know, I, I'm not an electronics engineer, uh, or uh, I've tried it. I love that this stuff, and I've read about it and watched videos for years, and I learned enough to be dangerous anyway. But <laughs> I've loved it since I was a kid, but I've really been trying to learn about, you know, component level electronics for several years now, but pretty complicated stuff, especially when it get, you get into the math. That's where it hangs me up is trying to, having to learn them. I'm just no good at math. So, uh, and with my brain not working right half the time, I, sometimes I can't even comprehend what I'm reading or listening, watching on the videos anymore. But, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I'll do what I can when I can. Um... So I'm going to go over here. I guess I'll have to, yeah, I'll switch mics. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, it should be, yeah, now I'm on the wireless mic. <coughs> and I'm going to get over here, and uh, I actually meant to go ahead and take the cover off the case, but I forgot. Um, so what I want to do, I had forgotten that I wanted to open the box. While I had that, uh, had this power supply out, I meant to open its box. I guess I'll turn it that way for now. And uh, well, that's more awkward than the other way. Open its box and uh, see if the caps looked any worse than they did last time I saw them. Let's see if they were. Uh... Oh, there's no screws in the cover. Okay, well, that makes it simpler. What do I do with them? Oh, I think I put them in a, a little. No, they're not in there. I now I don't know what I did with the screw. Oh, they've been off for a long time. I just left it that way because, as you see, that's a pretty tight lid. So you know, the, the, some of those these cases and these machines I have, um, they're so loose they'll fall off every time you move the machine. But that one don't do that. So I just left the screws out of it. There we go. I forget what I've been in and in and out of several machines lately, and I forget what's going on with what. Okay, so power supply. Get it out and uh, try it with the bottom ones and let the tight let the ones on top be tight since it'll want to tilt down. Oh, I'm gonna want that little bottle. Put them in there so that I won't end up losing them. That one's kind of cool because it snaps open, but it's also real easy to turn over when you're trying to put your screws in there. That's a film, a real film canister from the days of film cameras. I used to really be into that. I didn't ever have a fancy camera like a Nikon or anything, but I had a friend who did, and he taught me a little bit about photography, but got to work. He was so good at it. And he worked at a, I forgot to unplug everything. He worked at a photography a film processing place. Fox Photo was one of them he worked at. So he would, uh, we would, he'd, he'd take his, you didn't go anywhere with him without a camera. Let's see. Get that out of the way since it's already loose anyway. And, uh, then I can get to that. Ah, forgot to put this back in the picture, didn't I? There, now. Mm, everything is in the way of everything else, let's see. There we go. I've had this apart and back together several times lately, so I kind of know the drill in the last few days here. So, uh, so uh, what I've been thinking about all along is maybe putting this uh, this newer motherboard in her machine and put getting a six probably a six core processor and two four gig RAMs. These are only one gig in this one here. Two four gigs and have eight gig of RAM. Then should have a nice machine because uh, even even though Fedora doesn't 
blowed as fast as windows, it still grows in its resource usage over the years. And uh, so these machines <coughs> are, uh, I'm going to set this off the side, it, that table wobbles a lot and I don't want to have it slide off. It'll walk, the ends, the drop leaves lean when it, when you, when it leans back and forth a lot and that thing might just get, slide right off there and hit the floor. So, let's look in here. I forgot the other thing I was gonna do. I was gonna turn it on. I mean, it wouldn't really be, I've done it many, several times. I was gonna turn it on before I took this out. And, uh, See if uh, what the voltages was in the BIOS. I did it the uh, I, think I did it the other day, but anyway, I've done it lots, quite a few times. And when you first, you know, when you first boot it up, I don't. I may have done it. When you first boot it up, they all look just fine. They look great, and that's why you can see the, all the voltages on all the rails. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, I don't really know exact. I mean, uh, you know if. You can't probe these without poking holes in the wire, and I don't want to do that. I don't have anything. Well, actually, if I had something small enough, I might be able to probe these, but I don't really... I mean, just the basics it gives you in the BIOS is all I really completely understand, you know? I don't... Uh, I don't know what each one of those are supposed to be. I could look it up, but anyway. Uh, um, let me see how to get this open. But, my, my suspicion is that after it runs a while, maybe the voltages are dropping. Of course, that might not be the voltage dropping. Maybe the voltages are staying the same, and it's just the amperage that's dropping. Maybe they have the volts. I've seen that many, many times over the years of any kind of electronics. You may have your volts that you're supposed to have, but if the amperage drops, if the power, you know, drops, then your whatever it is is just not going to work right. Cars, electronics, whatever, you know, your, your starter, your battery. Say your battery may have... 12 volts, 12 and a half volts, you know, you can charge it right up, but if it's old and weak, then it, and it doesn't have the amperage, it still won't crank it over, you know, same principle. I'm trying to figure out how you get this open. I've had it open before. Let's see. Oh, it slides off like that. You take these, it's very different than the ones, I, the, all the rest of them that I've taken apart, or most of them. I think there's another one there, maybe. Put these in my little thing so that I don't lose them in the car. When sometimes when you they fall here on this carpet, they bounce, then I can't find them. That one looks like it's part of it too, yeah. There's this indent there, but it's not. That is an indent, not not uh, like another separate part. I thought maybe that was. Yeah, I thought maybe it, for a second there, I thought it might be that this wasn't part of the cover, but it is. So, and then I think there's only two on this side. Yeah, I think that got me a couple of times taking this off. I couldn't get the lid off even after taking all four of these screws out, and I was like, what's going on? Finally, I looked again. So... Got my multimeter there in case I decide to use it for any part of this. That, and it keeps things from rolling off this slanted side here, too, like screws. <laughs> the other day, it, it was just sitting there by coincidence, and it saved me from dropping something. This one doesn't have... It's, it's, it's rounded off. The metal has been bent around and rounded off, so it's not sharp there like all that is. So it doesn't... Even, what I'm getting at is it doesn't even have a plastic or rubber uh, grommet in there. Now here's the, this side. Yeah, I could have gotten my endoscope. Maybe I will, we'll see. It seems like it'd be of any use. <clears throat> Nothing looks burnt, I don't think. That would be one thing, you know, be obvious, but so many tiny components that could go bad. There's a lot, yeah. All these little, little bitty ones, those are resistors, are 
R102A, you know, so and so, so and so. R102D, C. Yeah, yeah, so R, usually, I think that always means resistor. Well, maybe it's a certain format that it has to be written in to mean resistor, but I think so. Anyway, um, let's turn it to where I can see it. Okay, so those caps look fine, those big ones. And there's some back here. They're not swollen. There's one that's swollen. Swollen quite a bit. Looks like it almost wants to pop. I'll try to turn it around there in a minute. I guess I will get the endoscope out. It's the only way you're going to see what I'm talking about. But let me look at everything over. I was thinking there were several that were swollen in here. But I only see one right now. Oh, there's another one. Okay. But, it, you know, it can either be other... That's the most common thing. They'll, everybody, all the electronics guys will tell you as to what to look for with electronics problems. And there's a lot of guys will show you how to, you know, replace them on different stuff. Mostly vintage stuff. And um, that's kind of the stuff that's... I mean, these power supplies ain't cheap. To, I'm starting to think, man, if... It only took me a few res ca capacitors to repair it. I might try to try it, you know. Even though I can't see good, my hands are not very steady anymore. But uh, okay, I was checking my stream before I went off. Oh, there's a cap on my endoscope cable. Ah, lost my... Got it plugged in. Yeah, I should be able to just switch to it and have it work. Actually, I'll go endoscope and cam two, and that way the waving around. The, oh, let's don't do that yet because it's still up in the rack where I left it. Uh, get up here and get it out. I forgot about that part. I didn't dawn on me that I might use it, so I didn't get, I didn't get it out ahead of time. I wasn't thinking. Okay, now. Okay, we'll try it that way. Now, because you'll be able to see. Okay, there's one of them right there. Well, that's one I hadn't seen yet, I think. That's on the other side. So, uh... Oh, there we go. Okay, now. Yeah. Oh, there's one that just looks like it could have popped. What is it? Maybe too close. There it is. That one is super, super. I think it might be worse than the last time I saw it. Let me get my glass, my little glass, and see if I can. Uh, Keep the camera there, I see. I don't see any residue. There's white glue all over them. A lot of this stuff's been glued. But man, I bet you that's bad as it can be. And I might, I do want to try, I have a capacitance testing function in my multimeter that I have now. I didn't used to have one. But uh, that one's pretty flat looking. It actually doesn't hurt the picture at all to use my thing. So, uh, those look fine and dandy, those big ones. But that doesn't, just the way they look, doesn't necessarily mean they're okay. But then there's some more on this side that look, that one's swollen. Let's see right here. Get it to where, maybe my, yeah, my lights. Okay, that one there is swollen. Those two don't look swollen. If you get off at a different angle, you can kind of tell how much. See, you can kind of tell that it's swollen. Try some different angle from that. Let's see. There. Now I think you can tell that it's swollen like that. More light makes it worse. Okay. That one's swollen. So now that would be hard to get to. But I'm not going to sp spend time working on this. 
I mean, one day I might actually try to fix it. Let's look at these. Those don't look swollen, but you know, they could all be bad. I've, I used to think that was a real, really good rule of thumb, you know, um, if they're not swollen, they're probably okay. But the more videos I watch, I watched one the other day where a guy was working on, I think it was some, as a power supply in something, but it was something for, rather old. But uh, so anyway, that's the inside of that thing. It's a 250 watt. Let's get, let's get off the endoscope now because um, I can't hold still enough for it to be worth looking at. Let's get back on cam two there. And these uh, wires out of there. Okay, so you can get an overall, pretty good overall view, but you just couldn't see. I'm looking at the preview now. I wasn't doing that a while ago. Can't see that those are swollen and all that, you know. But, uh, so we've got one really bad swollen one, two. There's another one over there I didn't show on the endoscope, but. So there's two for sh that are really swollen. And there may be more, but I've seen people, anyway, if I can learn, learn, I've never actually tested a capacitor with the tester on this thing, but I've seen people do it in circuit. Uh, I, it doesn't make, I don't understand how you could really do that without it skewing the results, but I see them doing it. I see them doing it while they're running even, but I wouldn't do that. And I will leave it unplugged for long enough that these caps couldn't get me when I got on the bottom side anyway. They wouldn't get, you know, discharge on me. Shock the heck out of me. So, um, I mean, if there's only two or three or four caps, there's not a hundred, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, counting the two big ones. I don't know if you bought all those, you might end up spending. Well, this is only a 250 watt. I don't think it'd be worth buying all those caps. Now that 450 watt might be, because those things are 55, 75 dollars. You know, I think I don't know what they are exactly right now, but I think I paid 55, 65 dollars for that 650 watt. So yeah, and then you've got so much more. You know, all your time putting it on it and everything too but uh, I'm gonna put this cover back on oh yeah this one you can get to the back without let's look at it you can get to the back without you can also shock yourself okay so you know finding it in all that on the other side there's one that's there's one that I'd like to test but how am I gonna know let's see which one it is I don't think there's there's labels on here and I don't think well, wait, that might be it. If there's a label that I can see. Ah, okay, there's several labels. I think maybe C905 would be the label to that. Let's see if it's on the back. Let me look at it right, right side up to myself. C905, okay. Okay. I've got to remember not to touch it. I will get shocked like crazy because it was just on last night. C906, okay, yeah, so that's how I can find them. So maybe I'll try sticking that on there and see. Where is it? C905. That's in. Turn it over. It's, that, that, that was still sideways to me. You see, this is, everything is so hard. Oh, well, there are, they go over which way, okay. Let me get my, my close-up glass and see if I can read them better. That's the thing. That's why I don't know if I can really do it, because I can't see good. 905 is what I want. There's 906. It should be close to that, I would think. It was right up kind of in... For, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that that uh, that they'd have the same number on either side. You know, maybe I'm not actually wrong about that. Maybe they do a 
that would make sense, total sense to me, you know, that they would do it that way. But I'm not signing 905. I think I'm in there. Maybe it's over this way more. It's not on that side. Let me flip it over again and find it. I didn't get it didn't get me, I just thought. Okay. There's a swollen one there on that side, and then where's that one that swollen so bad? There. Okay, so it's gonna be at the end of that heat sink. Well you can't really tell where the heat sink is from the other side very well. Okay, so C905. Okay, there it is. I know six. Unless, uh, unless you know, that is it. That's how they do it. You know, 905 is the top side, 906 is the bottom side. I guess I'll have to do some research to ever know. More more research on how they num typically do that. I've seen guys, you know, these electronics guys do this, what I'm trying to do here, but I've regularly never tried. I've, well, I mean, I, ever since I was a kid, I used to, I, the first thing I learned about soldering is old electronics. The solders would break, and you could see it with your eyes. Basically, back then, I didn't need no magnifying glass. And I would just, uh, I didn't, nobody told me. I just thought, okay, what happens? I'd been playing with solder, melting it, and trying to solder and think wires together and stuff. Kind of got to where I could do that. And I thought, so what happens if I just touch that with a heat gun, with a soldering gun? And I learned right quick, don't add any more, because then you'll go, it'll join the other, join them together when they're close together like that. And uh, so I would fix my AM transistor radio that way. And that's when I started really getting... Wow, if I could learn how to do that. Because, you know, until I found out when I was a little older that uh, I was probably 10 or 12. When I was a little older, I figured out that you got to be really good at math. That's when I gave up on doing it for a career, you know. Because I was wanting to do that. I was wanting to learn to do it. I do not see C905. So let's try a different one. Maybe I just can't find it. Not, not unusual for me. Okay, that one. Now, this one's a little bigger that's swollen here. It's right there in the middle. I don't see the number where it is though. Oh, I think it's C302. There's a lot of numbers right there. It's hard to tell. C302, one, 302, probably one of those. Okay, C301, 302. It's gonna be in this general area. Yeah, I don't see any C's in that area. So I don't think they're all labeled that way, the way I was thinking. 306. I think maybe the backside is for the... Yeah, they all go to a component, like R, all these resistors. So I don't think those labels actually go, correspond to the front side, top side. They're only for there for that those components. That's what I'm figuring out. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, that's hard, and just, jump, you know, probing around with the, with the meter and not knowing what, whether you're touching the right stuff, that's going to be, this is why I've never actually tried checking them or replacing caps or anything, because I've got, I saved, and it's not, they tell you don't waste your time doing that, but I saved some old uh, uh, CRT TV boards. You know, and they're usually labeled as to what the capacitors are, almost every component. And, you know, I could desolder some of the ones I need, uh, find the ones I need, desolder them, and then put them on here. But chances are, you think those are older. Well, this was built during the bad caps days of the early 2000s. The motherboard blew three or four caps. And that's how come I ended up with this in a trade for some of my work of rebuilding them a new, new computer. Uh, and, and like I said, I knew these, I looked at this when I got it, and I knew the caps were swollen, and I just, but I also knew that at least the stuff older than that could be swollen for 10 or 20 years and still work, you know. Actually, I'm beginning to find out some of this electronics will work with bad caps in them still. Uh, like, people really do a lot of repairs on, you know, audio amplifiers. I like audio gear, so I watch those a lot. And, uh, 
So anyway, uh, one guy the other day, that's what I was watching the other day. He was repairing an audio amplifier and he was showing you. It was just noisy. It worked, but it was noisy. Buzzing and stuff. So, uh, and it sure enough, you know, he replaced a bunch of, all, you know, a bunch of caps in it, I think pretty much all of them. But it was the older style electronics where it's, everything's bigger, easier to see and deal with. And you really got to be careful getting this on there. You can really get in there and shock yourself too trying to put this, this particular one. It's one of the hardest ones to get back together, especially without shocking yourself. Okay, but I'm closing it up. I'm not going to play with it anymore. Um, put my big, big screws in. Keep dropping. Put my big screws back in there. I don't want them. Okay, now. Magnetized screwdriver will save you a lot of headaches in life. So, and if they're not already magnetized, you can magnetize them on your car battery. I've showed, I actually showed that once or twice in a video. I don't know if this is in the middle of another video though. I don't think I ever made a specific video on how to do it, but it's easy. You want to be careful, but uh, you don't want to. Uh, do too much welding on straight on a car battery and you don't want you don't want to uh, definitely do it like if it was exhausting if it was be you know with the car running if any or if a charger on it for instance if it's exhausting the hydrogen fumes you wouldn't want to do that because it makes sparks big sparks so uh, anyway I'm not gonna I'm sidetracking here okay we're gonna put this back together now I looked into that 450 watt the other day it wore, and then plugged it in with it open. That still blows my mind. I don't know. I think maybe there's something sh bad in it that when you, either when you put the lid back on it, well, I did think that right in here, maybe that had got cut by the, well, there's a, a thing that pushes, it, there's a grommet on that other one and there's a metal tab that pushes on the grommet. I thought, what if that had cut through there and it was shorting on a wire, you know, but I think I already checked that once before well, a long time ago. I need, I can need to look again, but not now. Um, so, because I want to get back, I want to get back to uh, um, I'm going to, I'll show it in a minute. I have to move cameras and everything else. I might uh, what I want to do is change gears and set this uh, that's off the power supply okay I want to change gears and set this laptop that I always talking about that I use for previewing my live stream set it up for her to use while I'm rebuilding her computer in whatever way we end up deciding and talk to her about upgrading her hardware and she, would, she might want to do that Okay, so um, I think what I want to do, I'm going to leave that power supply out. Well, I'm in. I need to put it back. Oh, I do need to. Dang it. Because uh, uh, what I need to do is uh, I need to run hers, do another backup on it, and make sure I think I added a file or two during all this process. Then this one's got her, it, Hertz hasn't been, I have not opened up Thunderbird and up, you know, so there's no new emails hiding in there. But this one, I have opened it up with Thunderbird and so there's gonna be changes to the email profile. So I'll back up hers to my uh, USB drive and then back up this one on after that and it'll override any, you know, in the right order and uh, hung up on my microphone. <coughs> and uh, make sure the stream is still good. Okay. What to do with my screws? So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in there so that and it's probably best that way if I do wanna turn it on. I could go ahead and do what I was talking about, testing the, uh, testing, get those out, whoa, wow. save me, 
the uh, multimeter. See, that's what multimeters are good for. It closes, bridges the gap between my table and my tray there and stop me from losing screws in the carpet. Okay, is that right? Yep. So, as much as I hate to do this again, this one works. It's the only one that actually does work that I have that will, even though I think it's not working right now. There is another thing I'm considering. And if I remember right, this ASRock motherboard is very specific. They have a list of processors that it supports on their site. And I think this one is not strictly on that list, but it is the same type as others in the list. And so it has worked, but it could possibly be that it's not on the list because it's not actually compatible. And what's crashing it, it's nothing to do with the power supply, but it's the video. And if I had a way to show that to you easily without spending a lot of time, I mean, I'd have to let it run till it randomly crashes and <laughs> then stick a camera up at the screen, you know, so I can show it to you. But, uh, and it can run for many days. You know, I, can, I used to use it a lot when I had Windows 7 on it. I'd let it run all day to back up my Google, my photos, all my videos and pictures to Google Photos. But then it got to where it just didn't want to run right anymore. And so, since it's a problem that got worse and worse over time, that's why I really think it's the power supply. Um, and now, the last two times I've ran it, well, I ran it quite a few, several hours, and then it did that, and then I just had it on for 30, 45 minutes maybe when it did it yesterday, last night, whenever it was. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's, a, and especially knowing that those caps are all swollen like that, I think that's it. I think that they're, I think that they're, uh, everything's degrading every time I run it, you know. And I don't want to keep running it until it damn it, you know, it, it could like, send a big surge you could something one you know they could when they do pop i've heard well i've seen videos with pictures of what happens and sometimes they pop and really just kind of blow up and then they send a big surge of power back through the motherboard and burn it up and don't want that this is a good motherboard bought it brand new so uh don't get to do that real often anymore so uh, mostly, almost everything I got to used. And a lot of these computers kind of pieced together from you know different ones. So mom's isn't, and so I don't want to. Uh, I don't really want to. If I don't have the stuff, but I don't want to set her one up like that either. But I don't have the right parts to do it if I wanted to. So. <coughs> So if you didn't know how to remove and replace the power supply, it's pretty easy. But you do, uh, it's the motherboard where it gets trickier with these uh, cables that run to the periphery, you know, the, on, the front and back of the, well, mostly the front. The back is the motherboard itself, the things you plug into. But the front is, uh, gotta have my light and my, Magnifier to see what how to plug that in. The front is uh, checking the memory that it didn't get knocked loose. Front uh, peripherals, you could say, I guess, uh, has to be plugged in to the right things down there. Can you see where I'm pointing? Yeah, you can see the whole thing. Okay, you've really got to. Well, they come when you buy a motherboard. They come with the. Uh, diagrams and telling you what everything is but it's also marked on there so after you learn a while you can probably figure it out on a I can figure it out on pretty much every used computer I've I've dealt with sometimes I make a mistake and then have to <laughs> go back and check again but something goes like the, so the power switch sometimes can be the trickiest one to get right and so let's see um, SATA cable so yeah, I'm going to be turning this on. There we go. I'll be turning it on and uh, I guess what I can do is aim the camera at the screen when I, and, and get it into BIOS and we'll see what the voltage looks like. 
Yeah, even if that gets over that, it won't touch the fan, but I really like it being able to even get that direction. There. Yeah, that's better. Okay, hard drive. All right, oh yeah, and I always put this up in here. Keep it from dangling in the wrong place. Because when you turn them up and stand them up right, the, the cables tend to go, well, they tend to go that way in this case, because this is the top of it. Okay, now we're back together. All right. So anyway, later, I might play with, the, oh, every so often I get messing with all the old computers I have, and I, I like to have them all where they'll work, you know. And uh, where I can do something with them, give them, you know, do something, maybe even. I always thought I'd be fixing them, give them to people and stuff, but, well, they, by the time somebody gives me one, it's old, really, they're, no, you know, most people just go ahead and buy something newer than that. They don't really <laughs> want it, have a use for it. So I gave one away once years ago to somebody, and they didn't really appreciate it. And <laughs> they got they gave it away. <laughs> so and it wasn't fast or anything, but it was better than nothing. They didn't have anything, you know. But that was before I was just getting into Linux, and I actually had Windows 98 on it. But I put Linux on it. I think it might have done. Well, I put I left Windows 98 on it because they were wanting to use a dial-up. That uh, can, they were going to use net zero internet dial-up, and they didn't. Uh, you had to use their software to dial in there. You couldn't just put the number in some generic software. So did it that way. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make that all nice and straight on there. Now I could move the camera. But right at the moment, I won't. I don't know, maybe I will. That's maybe exactly how I want to... Might be what I want to do is move this camera to point at my screen. Yeah, probably will. Probably will, but I'll do that in a minute. I'll have to move this. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to plug it up if I'm going to have to move the table. Okay. So, uh, let's just switch our view. Oh, no wonder the laptop's making noise. It's playing my video. And uh, <coughs> I need to stop it. There we go. Well, my stream's still good, though. I'll go ahead and kill the browser. And if I, When I do that, it, it sometimes uh, overworks that machine so much, just playing that preview, that I end up having to reboot the laptop. But if I just kill the browser f for a few minutes and let it recover, then it's usually all right. Okay. Um, Move this. Then I can move my camera. Yeah, I'll just put it over this way, like I usually do. Oh, I am really straining that cable. Speak to me. Yeah. Okay. Got all these different places I set my stuff, depending on where I'm <laughs> working here. Okay, this one, well, oh, well, eh, leave it. It's a double view. You're gonna have to bear with me here for a minute. I'm, oh, no, that won't work. I've got to reroute my rubber bands. You can't see what I'm doing, but. I have to reroute things. I've got a combination of, I showed one of these the other day, but I've got a, these big old, well, if you buy coffee beans, these big old fat twist, twist, uh, plastic and metal holders, ties. <clears throat> okay, that's going to be too high. That's probably about right. Yeah. Let's put this back over here so I can see to aim that. That's my computer rack over there that I'm always talking about. <clears throat> yeah, now I'll be able to tell how to aim the camera. Okay, let's see. It's a little funky to, to my... <coughs> 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 Ugh! <laughs>
I don't know what caused that. Well, now yeah, I'll leave it as high as it is, but we better get it. Kind of looking down on everything, but actually that's not so bad. There. Uh, of course, you won't be able to see the text or anything, <clears throat> but you'll at least get the idea of what I'm doing here. I started to try to bring it up really close, but you still can't read it because <clears throat> I can only stream on the Wi-Fi at 720p, so it's not readable. It's all my wife I can handle, or my phones can handle. I always say my wife I, wife I could handle it. Pretty sure if I had the ability to do it. I'm getting tangled up in other cables here. There. Got a mouse under there that I'm always getting a cape wrapped around its cable when I'm moving this stuff around. So I've got my Ethernet over here. Might not actually strictly need it for what I'm going to do, but in case I want it, I'll, it'll be hooked up. Well, that clip, it's not... When I put the tape on it, it wants to stay down like it was compressed with the tape on it. If I don't, I'll break the other end's broken. No, not this one, but my other red one has one end broken, one end okay. I have another one the same length. And so. <clears throat> Is that one... They're not much good like that unless you just happen to plug it into a pretty tight Ethernet port. They'll just <clears throat> come out on you. So, um, or they'll just pull out just enough to lose connection. That's what's really aggravating. So, <clears throat> take care of your Ethernet cables. You'll be happy you did. Damn it. Okay, now. So what I'll do is boot it up and uh, get to my stream page again. <coughs> okay, now. <coughs> Stream, whoops, wrong mouse. Okay, check that again and then I'll pause it. As long as it's paused, it's okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, let's see. Okay, now I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put it over on here cam on too. Then you can kind of at least get an idea of what it is I'm talking about here. When I boot it up, <clears throat> now I'm going to have to switch my... Yeah, leave it like that. Switch my uh, KVM switch over to that machine. Can't see where it's going because all my paper's up there. Maybe I'm going to end up having to either take some of them out of there or find a new place for them all. Okay, now, turn it on. And I don't know if, we, if it's a delete, escape, F1, F2. We'll try them all. Not seeing anything yet. F2. I saw it on the screen. There we go. It might be more than one thing that works too. Because I think it I would hit delete, and then I hit escape, and then I hit F1, and then I hit F2, and before I hit F2 it looked like it was already going into the BIOS. Okay, general help. Well I'm, I'm pretty well been in here a lot, so uh There we go, hardware monitor, HW monitor. Okay, now the temperature, of course, is cool, 84 degrees, it just now booted up. The uh, fan speeds, and see if those were super low or something, then you would know there was something wrong with your fan or they wouldn't get enough power. But the V-Core, 3.3 volts. Huh, I wonder if I, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I was thinking this is what it's supposed to be and this is what it is. 
Oh, like that. Well, it is. That's what it is. But it's 3.3 volts, but you got 1.2 volt and uh, 3.92 volts. Well, see, that's a little high. But that could be very low. You know what? I don't know if I've ever seen that before or not. But uh, <clears throat> that may be what's uh, actually seeing some evidence there. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm working, uh, <clears throat> as you can probably tell, I'm working on everything kind of as a half-educated guess. You can't see my screen at all, can you? Uh, so I'll just tell you, I could try to make it to work. If I had the camera before, I could zoom straight in on it, then this is real big. You might read it, but it won't good, you know, take forever. 3.3 volts. The top number is 1.2 volts. Then again, there's only 3.3, 5, and 12 on here. Sometimes some devices show everything plus and minus volts. This is your only plus voltage. There's no negatives in here. But over here, it just has a colon. Say like up here, CPU temperature, 35 degrees C, 95 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> so down here, I'm assuming that's the same. Uh, okay, well, V-Core. Oh, V-Core is 1.2 volts, which is... I don't completely understand it. I've, I've, I've kind of got, I've watched videos where people were explaining it. And uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't remember enough. So, no, I might not have figured out anything. 3.3 is 3.392. That's a little high. I don't think that would be a problem, though. 5 volt, and if it was four, over 4 volts, I might think that was a problem. <clears throat> 5 volts is 5.16. 12 volts is 12.144. So, um I've seen uh, I've seen when the when the uh, 12 volt is actually running at like 11.6, 11.9, and the and the machine still runs okay. But uh, under like 12 and a, 11 and a half volts, your hard drives usually won't work right. They may not even uh, spin up. <clears throat> so yeah, V core is 1.2 volts. Okay, that, I I probably saw that before and just said, oh okay. Seem uh, I don't under, I don't completely know exactly what V core is. I think it's got to do. I, th I think it has to do with the processor, but I think maybe it does. Maybe that's just the voltage to the processor. But I was thinking, you know, if you read up, a, if you look read up about how it all works. Well, for instance, uh, you know, processors are rated at so many watts. You know, generally these, you know, desktop processors, 60, 80, 95, 125. You know, like that. Like the six and eight cores are 90. 95 and 120 something volt, uh, watts, not volts, watts. Uh, <clears throat> this one is a AMD Athlon. It's up here in the beginning. AMD Athlon, dual core, uh, 4050E, 64 bit, <coughs> 2100 megahertz. And so uh, I don't think that'll tell you anything about, yeah, it won't. And I have two 1 gig RAM sticks. Uh, so. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> wish you could see this. Um, I don't know whether V core 1.2 volts is good, bad, or indifferent. I just don't know. So, um, yeah, but all the other, uh, I've seen them where, you know, it was obvious the power supply wasn't working well because the uh, 12 volts is low. Usually it's the 12 volt one that I always see being low. <clears throat> and that runs a lot of different things on there. You know, you've got 12, several 12-volt 12 leads going into the motherboard. You, all your uh, your hard drives and your DVD drives and all that run on 12 volts. And uh, there's some negative 12 volts and negative 3.5 volts and negative 5 volts that go to the motherboard. There's all kinds of different things. On. That's There's a lot more to it than what's showing right here. <clears throat> but... Uh, and this motherboard, this, this AS Rock has what's called OC Tweaker, and you can overclock it and do all that. I have it on auto. I didn't, uh, and of course I knew with that power supply I couldn't overclock it anyway, so I didn't try to push anything. Um, and so none of the voltages are... Um, processor maximum voltage is right there, 1.25. Okay, that answers me my question. It 1.2 even that's what the v core is so that's the processor like i was thinking okay so the processor runs on 
one point one point <clears throat> two five maximum voltage, and uh, or that's what it's set at. Either it's blacked out, so you can't change it. So where is uh, there? It is Vo uh, multiple voltage change multiplier. There's a lot to it, and I never have bothered enough to learn it all because <clears throat> uh, I didn't want to. I don't have the money to burn up a motherboard or a processor playing with them. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, the auto, I'm sure, is safe enough, you know. <clears throat> so, um, Everything else, I haven't changed anything, so I'm going to get out. I'm going to have to say, discharge change, discard changes and exit, so that if I accidentally change something, I won't mess something up. Let it boot up. <clears throat> now, this machine was, uh, no, it, yeah, it was. Now it's just Fedora. It was. I ran it as Windows 7 for a while and just used it on remote desktop when I needed wanted to use something on Windows. But then it kept crashing and, and running terrible. And I just thought, well, it can't handle Windows 7. Although that's what it was built for. It was built during the early Windows 7 days, and that's it came with Vista on it and a, and a Windows 7 upgrade CD, and that's what I used to put 7 on it because they gave me that DVD, not CD. But uh, <coughs> So I'm thinking... While this is booting up, I'm trying to decide, do I want to... I'm going to go ahead and just back it up, do one more backup on it. Then I'll swap out and put Mom's PC up there and do a backup on it. Oh, I'm doing it backwards if I do that. <clears throat> okay, so I'll put hers up there, and then I'll, then I'll do hers first, then this one. And uh, <clears throat> then I can go to work on the laptop. Oh, you can see the laptop now. This laptop over here... Oh, that's booting up. That's what's going on is it's booting up the uh, AS Rock is. Uh, the laptop is um, it's a Dell 1525, 2, two gigahertz uh, Intel processor, Core 2. And it has 3 gig of RAM and about 348 megabyte of onboard video memory. It'll, I mean, it's getting to where it doesn't work as good as it used to, or it didn't on Fedora. I finally, well, it just can't, it can't play videos on Fedora anymore. But with the Bane, eight on it it does just fine i used to use this every night before i went to bed i have a sd video cable running from this this rack over to my old, old crt tv over there let me log in and uh <clears throat> logging into the as rock and so i used to watch tv on it but i don't even do that anymore i've just got to wear I just watch whatever I want to watch on, uh, and I didn't actually watch TV. I watched web video from the web, you, you, whatever it was, YouTube or whatever, or uh, Amazon. We got that Amazon Prime. But I, I got to where I can't really, you know, with it's an old CRT TV and the, the, everything's widescreen now, I got to where I can't make out the face as good, and I just didn't like it well. So, uh, <clears throat> And if I put on my glasses over there that far away from the TV, then it doesn't look right. I can't see anything good and with them, without them. So uh, I just got to where I just sit here in front of the computer and watch whatever I want to watch. Uh, and then, you know, then I, if I watch it, I usually do. I usually watch something before I go to bed and kind of re try to relax. So um, still just a white screen. I could change the lighting on the camera and all and make it a little better, but then I'd, I'd just be wasting your, t your time, and then I'd have to change it back the instant I go do something else. So. Depends on the, sometimes when the lighting's different in the room, it'll actually kind of show up. Even if I was closer, it would still do the same thing until, unless I manually set the uh, lighting on the phone camera. Okay, so. There we go. Got to write down this. Uh, I've got uh, Team Viewer open up. <laughs> I hope it doesn't crash in the middle of my, what I'm trying to do. Oh, I'm doing this like not really. I'm realizing that I don't want to sit here running this. <laughs> There's actually no reason for me to sit here running this uh, until I get ready to do its backup. But I want to. I need to do the older machine first. This will be the newer stuff. 
then then I'll uh, then I can copy that back up into the laptop. Yeah, I'll have to make her a screen name first, but uh, that won't that's easy and quick. But then I can copy all her stuff in there. I'm pretty sure there's enough room. I'll look. Let's look right now. I'm thinking about it. Make sure I'm not getting hung up on something that I can't do. Let me see how much data is actually on her. Let's just see what's in her total home directory. Um, what's all this? It's something in downloads, I guess. With this extra stuff in the little deal here, I can't even see all what I want to see. Okay, yeah, I think that's her downloads directory. Yeah, it was. Okay, so home. Theta. Let's just see the whole Theta. That that'll be close enough. There's not. There's plenty of apps in there, but okay. Thirty-nine point three gigabytes. Now I think I, I'm pretty sure I have plenty of space. Um, I'm picking the folder oh okay I guess I never actually made a these are her old screenshots folders so actually I don't know because this went straight to the pictures director maybe I was been making yeah I did I think I was just making screenshots straight into <clears throat> oh, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to save it in her screenshots folder. It's not that important. Okay, so uh, I need to make her a folder for whatever machine. <laughs> you know, like I always say screenshots Lenovo i5 or screenshots Dell 1525 laptop or whatever. So I know what they represent, you know, what they mean, what they're about. Okay, so. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's enough space on there for that. Oops. Okay, now, I was so close to having this thing ready for her to use, too, but it, I mean, it's just going to keep crashing. So uh, I'm sure of that now, the more I think about it, <clears throat> it's crashed twice when I ran it any length of time, and it kept it used to keep doing that. And I blamed it on Windows 7, really, uh, but it's really either the power supply, like I really think, or actually that little processor, the video chip, most likely. That's what it looks like is a video crash <clears throat> whenever you see it crashed. Uh, well, because the it's sitting there running and everything. Of course, usually when they crash, they do stay running. Sometimes they reboot. It doesn't do anything like that. Like a lot of Windows machines used to keep, like get hung up in an instant, constant reboot. But, uh, okay, let me switch over <clears throat> to... Now I gotta switch to my machine so I can switch my camera view. Um, I'm getting both, both cameras, cameras so you can see everything of what all I'm doing in here. Now, um, so I think I think the way it looks that, it, that it's a video cr video crash is what's crashing and hanging it up. Uh, well. I mean, there's no desktop or anything. I don't know what process, if there is any processes running. Usually when Linux machines crash, they'll go back to like a command line. Like if, you, if you're if uh, X11, you know, well, I think they're not losing X11 anymore. But if you're, your desktop, your desktop, uh, your desktop, uh, your video crashes, your de then uh, what they'll do is... Uh, well, I guess I can just shove this one this way. And put the other one on this side. <clears throat> when your video crashes, then uh, can't walk and talk at the same time. When your X11 cra X11 crashes, then. Uh, I guess I'll wait until my brain comes back together and I know what the heck it was I was trying to say. Okay, 
So let's hook this up. Careful there. Yep, cable's hung on my, there. It gets hung on my very long, I have a quarter inch TRS connector coming out of my mixer where I'm sending the sound back to my Lenovo i5. Oh, it's right under there. Uh, when I'm sending the sound back to it, uh, it's a quarter inch converted to uh, 3.5 millimeters, so that makes it very long. And so those, anytime my cable's dangling back there, it'll hang on it. And if I yank, you forget and yank on it, you're going to break that connector in the computer. Sometimes I forget and kind of yank a little bit more on it, thinking, oh, I'll just yank it loose. Yeah, you'll yank it loose, all right. <clears throat> so I don't have, I have one cable that I could replace it with, but I think it might not be a good enough quality. It might put noise in my recording. I don't want that. Now I guess I need to buy one. Of course, sometimes you buy brand. I bought some cables. One time I bought some um, 3.5 millimeter cables that were just total crap. I uh, bought like three or four of them in a package, and uh, I think half of them were no good, were dead, make it just buzzing, and the other half worked. And I thought, well, they're going to probably break in no time. So I sent them back because, you know, faulty. It was an Amazon. I sent them back. It's faulty. And so uh, I don't, I just don't. Uh, used to, you could buy, those were bargain cables. You could buy the bargain cables <coughs> and be all right. Not anymore. And it, it said <coughs> they had okay reviews. <coughs> it was either they were okay. <coughs> they were either okay or they were broke, dead at DOA. Mine were half DOA and half work, so I'm not going to put up with that crap. I didn't just keep them and say, oh, well, like a lot of people do when they say in their reviews. And uh, so anyway, I, the cables I bought after that, well, the next, I bought two more, R2, two RCAs to 3.5 millimeters, what they are, two cables, and they're like 650 each, but they're very good cables, and that was on sale. <clears throat> they're not those cheap little things they're pro audio cables so i used to make sounds so for I'm bands really so. kind of a well i know you know i know what good cables are and i'm kind of picky okay so that'll do now we'll boot up now this time oh dang it i forgot to switch i knew i was forgetting something you don't get over there in time well some of these machines will boot just fine without the the switch being on, you know, the video uh, being actually dirt physically connected to them by the switch, the KVM switch, and some of them won't. They'll get like real small, like 640 by 480 resolution or something, and it won't change when you get into the OS either, and it's a pain in the butt to get it to. Some of them you can't. Some of them you can. You can go into the settings and change it, but some of them, they don't want to do it. So if you do it ahead of time, you're better off. I guess I've got it. should be showing the video by now. Sometimes that switch doesn't work right, though. I'm plugged into the wrong video card. Plugged into the onboard video card. I guess it's not going to work because the other one's in there. It's just not, I'm just not plugged into it. You can just do that, though. I should be able to get video by. But the whole thing I was talking about, we'll see what happens. I'm going to have to reboot. It should begin to come up. If not, I'll have to start over. <clears throat> I don't want to hard shut it down if I don't have to. No video though. Okay, made a liar out of me. Okay, I did a hard shut down because I don't even have video. I won't even know when it's booted or not. It might have already been booted. And with Windows, you might break something, but you hardly ever do when you do that with Linux. <laughs> now, watch me be lying about that this time, too. But uh, anytime you say something is this way or is that way, you, you usually get made a fool of. Okay, there we go. Fedora 14 and Linux Mint 9 on there. <coughs> I hit the arrow key just to, I wanted to be able to watch the boot up sequence, but it hadn't gone far enough yet, so it put me, I caught it, 
uh, where you could select a different operating system. It's that's a dual boot. Oh, this machine is a dual boot. Okay. Uh, well, it's booting up. I'll do my check my video stream again. Wish there was a better way to do that. It didn't take like a, almost 30 seconds to a minute to check it. Oh, there is. You could let it play all the time and then just mute and unmute it. But See, now that the screen's black, you can at least see there's writing on it over there. I see that. But it wasn't quite black uh, in that BIOS. So it was kind of beige. It wasn't white, but it was beige. It was bright enough. <clears throat> was bright enough that uh, it wouldn't show up in the camera. The camera couldn't handle the different contrast between the screen and the background. Yeah. If, if my laptop could handle playing that preview, I'd just let it play all the time and I could just glance up at it. Just mute and unmute the sound so it wouldn't drive me nuts. <clears throat> okay, so we're in. This is a great system. I believe what I'm going to do is make an image of this for door 14 and then copy it onto the new hard drive because I think I'll make that our backup operating system. And all these apps, she doesn't usually use all these extra apps, but if she ever did or if I... I did want to on her machine for something, then I'd be able to do that. And both of them being Fedora, <clears throat> and I'll just use the same username, same password, and then won't have any per file permission conflicts with the backup. I had a real problem with that with using Mint's, this is, that was Linux Mint Debane, or, well, yeah, I think it was Debane, but even if it was the Ubuntu Mint, Mint uh, it still uses, a di there's some differences that I discovered when I did that in the way that handles file permissions. <clears throat> And it gave me all kind of headaches. I'd get question marks instead of owner of the file. <coughs> well, I remembered um, to hit. Now I shouldn't have even have done it. I hit uh, Control Three on my keyboard when I started coughing and, mute and muted the keyboard. But now, since I'm actually not even on that machine. Uh, I only have my memory to go by of whether or not it, you know, I muted it and unmuted it. I can, now I can see, okay, I did. Everything looks good. And I have to do that. That's why I don't try to mute it when I'm coughing because it just turns into more. Most of the time I, I don't have time, you know, and I cough so hard that I can't, it couldn't, I couldn't hit control three on the keyboard. I'm jerking all over the place, but uh, uh, so anyway. Sorry, I, I really hate uh, I, I, when I watch back and I hear how loud I'm coughing on this lapel mic. The other one's bad enough, but at least I can move away from it a little bit. And it also blocks out. Well, I've got a compressor on it, so it doesn't get as loud. But this one, I can't do that because it runs straight over the Wi-Fi from one camera to the through the Wi-Fi to my machine through OBS Studio. And there are some effects in OBS Studio. I don't know if there's a compressor in there. I'm going to look in there and see. But that would give more, uh, make the machine work harder too. So I think that's why I just, I've tried, I remember trying some effects in there and deciding it was going to overtax the machine. All right. Uh, all I need to do, okay, I need to go to my machine, <clears throat> get my, unplug my Seagate drive, plug it into this machine, and then run a backup. I still have a backup job that I made for that purpose. Oh yeah, and while I'm on my machine, let's see, I won't even switch the camera just because I'm gonna not gonna be on it long enough to matter. Okay, unmount, unplug that, and unplug this uh, endoscope cam. That uses a lot of resources. Okay because it's sending data through my machine, even though it's not being streamed, you know, it's just making my machine work. I figured out that USB cameras really work machines hard. If you just plug two old, I've got two really old USB cameras, you know, webcams, they'll work the machines, uh, if you put, turn them both on, it'll work the machines super hard. 
Uh, I used to try to do dual camera shoots with different apps before I discovered OBS Studio. <clears throat> One good thing about OBS Studio is when you switch off, well, when you switch off of my cameras, my, my phones, that's a VLC stream, and it, turn, it shuts it off, so it's not. If you didn't <clears throat> do it that way, then it would uh, completely fill up the cache on the machine and make it probably crash. But the USB, I'm not quite sure how it handles it, but everything seems okay except for if you run it for a couple of hours that way, <clears throat> uh, you can tell the machine's slowing down. Okay, now, yeah, there's a Seagate. Okay, so really all I think I need is Lucky Backup. I started opening up Crusader. Okay, this, this one, this searcher, you need to actually click on to find applications. Oh yeah, this one you have to do yeah, there you start. You don't can't just type lucky. You got to type lucky back at least, and then get it. I don't. Okay, I think I made it in the third one on the right. The actual super user. I didn't get out the password for that. Oh. Oh, okay. <clears throat> For a moment there, I couldn't remember what machine I was on, much less what password it is. That fan on that thing is making some noise again. Yeah. Just hit them, they'll be all right. They'll fix them. <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't make any difference. It'll whine for a while, and then it'll quit. That's what it's been doing. Okay, so Fedora 14 Thunderbird. Let's look and see if this is the thing I want, the job that I want. Yeah. No, that is the normal one going to her. Okay, here it is. There, Yeah, I put that all back to normal. That's the normal backup. The one on the bottom... It's the one I want. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> so what I want to do is deselect all these because I don't want to wait for all those to run through their whole backup. It would take. It would probably take a good while. This. I don't know how long this is going to take as it is. And I'm just going to hit run because I've already checked it out and everything before and it was supposed to work. It may not take long at all because there's really not going to be but like a couple of text files that need to be changed, you know. But it still takes a while just to look through, you know, for the program to look through and see what it needs to do. I didn't think about it, but let's see how. Oh, it's almost done. I was going to say I could have got on remote desktop and then I could have showed you what I was doing. Well, it's up to 95% and now it's kind of sticking there. I'll just leave it in that screen and let's see. Oh, yeah, it's already running. All I have to do is log in. <clears throat> this machine uh, is like I have it set that way so that I can just get in there and help her anytime I wanted. So, uh,. Come on. I went to my machine and now my mouse isn't. I think it didn't catch. By the time I get through fiddling around trying to... It might take long enough. Okay, let's try it again. <coughs> I'm afraid my switch is just getting too old. Okay. Uh, two in the desktop. That's what I'll do. Then you can see both... Yeah, two and desktop. Okay, so remote desktop. I don't know what the IP address of it is, though. That's the only thing I forgot to look. Because <coughs> this is um, on my router. I have no clue what the IP address is. 
that means switching back again to look. I could look in my D-Link router and find it. I think this would be faster. Yeah, when it gets down to the end, that's when it always slows down. So that's why I'm thinking maybe I have time to do this. Nothing better to do right at the moment. Okay, 0 0.171. <laughs> Oh, 0.171. Okay. That was the top one, last one I was on. There we go. Another computer is controlling it, pops up, but that's in the other machine, not on my machine. <clears throat> I'll leave it like that, I guess. Oh, let's see. Where is the... It went away. I can't see my controls. It's not in... Oh, that's her machine. It went into full screen. All about... Oh, I guess that's what I clicked on. <laughs> I thought it was clicking on make it fit, but I clicked on uh, full screen. Okay. There we go. Lucky back up. Finished. Okay, there we go. See, that's that wasn't bad at all. Okay, now. <clears throat> arrows found two. Okay, there's two files, I guess, two errors. I don't, that, that doesn't mean they're just two files. That means there's two errors. So I'm going to look through and see if it's anything that looks important. R-Sync Red Link Start Start Stat Home Theta GVSS Failed Okay, permission denied That's fine, I didn't want that anyway That would have copied that whole That's where the <coughs> if it, the uh, Linux Mint uh, file system is mounted Where the partitions are mounted It would have copied that whole thing So it's actually good that it's uh, Not doing it Should be a way to set tell it not to do that In this profile not to try to do that. Let's look and see if there's something I overlooked. See, there's no exclude.gvfs like in the newer versions. It's just that you're lucky because it errors out. And everything else looks good. You can't do it, preserve ownerships and file names in this way in this older version. So I think it'll be okay. I want to put everything back to normal before I get out of here so that when it gets if it you know if it if it does get run again or well if I make an image of it and well if I make an image of it and it'll be different that that partition won't be there anymore but anyway it'll just it just won't run but if it gets run again in its natural state we'll say then it'll work like it should uh, never know what I'm going to end up having to do man thing nothing's going to plan with this little project that was all i wanted to do i don't want to open up thunderbird for sure so i'll get out of here before i quit and do it forget and do it and all i want to do is go now to the as rock and do the same thing oh i shut it down remotely i wasn't i forgot i was on the remote desktop okay so now let's go back to both cameras all right <clears throat> now it should shut down here in a minute but i'm gonna go ahead and switch over on my KVM switch. Well, when that fan rattles, it drives me crazy. Okay, I've got it over there. <clears throat> and it shut down so I can just unplug this Seagate cable. power cable. I got two power cables that I'm using so well at one point I had them both running. I need to have them both running. Okay. <clears throat> That's that for that right now. <clears throat> oh, that's what I had that fan sitting on the uh, top of that so I could uh, maximize my space. There. 
usage over there. Okay. Actually, I could turn on the fan if I needed to with it like that. Okay, now. Oh, I was looking at the preview on the laptop, trying to figure out where to set that, where to put that machine, and I was like, oh, that doesn't change. Okay. This one doesn't have an extra, a real video card in it, so it's in the that top. That's what threw me off, made me mess, kind of mess up. <clears throat> okay, that's what I'm blaming it on. All right, now. <clears throat> Yeah, I should be able to boot up. Assuming my switch worked good. I wonder if I'd open that case on that switch and spray it with some electrical contact cleaner, it would quit doing that. I bet I ought to try that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, the Seagate drive. Well, I forgot, but that's okay. Uh, I'll wait till it's booted up and then plug it in. <clears throat> it's really the best way to do it, especially when I have so many different USB drives. Some of them um, have, a, they're, they're bootable, you know, they have operating systems on them. And then I confuse myself for a moment when I say, what's going on? But it does take time away from what you're trying to do. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this one always does that, and that's weird. No other machine I can think of does that. It's all gray except for just a few of the ticks. I don't know if you can see that or not, but just a few of the, uh, the you know, the black screen with the white and, white and green text trying to show through. Maybe, the, And that's another reason why I think maybe there's something wrong with the video, but it's fine once it boots up. Either that or the, the processor really just isn't compatible with the motherboard, like possible, you know. I was checking my stream again. But whatever it is, either one, <coughs> this thing machine's not usable it's like it is. I do know that motherboard worked just fine when I put it in her machine. Now, when I bought it, I made sure that her processor and her machine, her main machine, is was compatible, is in the compatibility list. I didn't run it a real long time, but... Uh, Definitely had no problems with it. I discovered that it was a switch. Uh, fixed the switch and ran it a little while and then took that. I thought, well, what's the point in leaving a brand new motherboard in there when the other one's fine? You know, I thought that could be used in another machine. So I just took it out. So, is it booted up enough? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to plug in our Seagate drive. Now, identical, well, not identical, but it looks, well, it doesn't look the same at all. <laughs> uh, same user and all, uh, same data, but different, X, this is XSCE, that was Genome 2, the actual real Genome 2, not Mate, the new fork of Genome 2. And, uh, and this is, uh, of course, a different desktop background. Oh, yeah, this time I will go straight into Team Viewer and do it that way. The backup drive is mounted. So uh, I'll get Team Viewer up and going and then I'll I'll just show what I'm doing from you know where you can see it. <clears throat> Gotta write down that little new password. <clears throat> now, I've added a few more papers under there, and they're not, they're well, not even laying down good. So. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to change that. I don't get in here and switch a whole lot unless I'm working on other machines, so I just kind of tend to let it pile up. <clears throat> see okay I switched to my machine now let's get on the desktop yep okay desktop and 
we'll hope we don't have problems with Team Viewer again like we did the other day. Usually, uh, lately, you know, I've been using it a lot, and I only had that trouble where it couldn't connect once. Okay, it's good. I'm also checking my stream again. Okay. I think we're going to be okay with that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Seagate's mounted up. It doesn't have the black icon like usual in this system, but it's still okay. Now, uh, I don't have Lucky backup on that. Yes, yeah, so I can just type Lucky in either one of these. And they all need to be in the super user. Okay, yeah, that was the one I made. I don't think it ever ran. If it did, I just didn't notice it, but. Could be that I got mixed. I've gone back and forth. It really, I mean, it could be the desktops that make a difference too, but I know in my Fedora 23 Mate, I have to set it up in Super User for it to run uh, on a Chrome job. But uh, I'm going to validate it. I want to see. Everything seems to be okay. So it's not saying no. You're trying to copy to the same, you know, nothing's come, I mean, it's. I'm not copying the same directory to itself, but I am copying everything I wanted out of Home Theta into Home Theta Backup, but it doesn't seem to. Backup source inside destination, okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to do synchronize. That's not the way I want to do it. Okay, it does say do not create an extra directory, but, I, yeah, you still don't want that. I, I went through that recently. Okay, so I don't know why it perhaps why it hasn't been running. Let's see. Look at the schedule. Skip critical profile default. At reboot delay twenty minutes. That should be good. Okay. Profile execution scheduling. Yes. And the Cronit button's not even working, so I, I remember I clicked Cronit. Console mode. Check if your machine yeah, doesn't have a graphical environment. I don't want that. I don't know. Oh, now you can click Cronit. Click Chrome tab. That tells you what it would do. Reboot. Tells you the exact command. Says it was created close I don't know update successful well, of course I'm not gonna that probably won't get used now but uh, it's not gonna be used right this minute that's for sure okay back up oh and, it, and at one point the first time I tried to back up mom's PC I had did it over the network with that profile and it hung up towards the end as a matter of fact I think what happened is that the AS rock crashed I'm not sure now but this one is the one I want to run right now. It says it can't do it. it. says there's something wrong. Backup Theta's Hot Rod PC to Home Theta. What? Modify. Maybe this is not what I thought it was. Oh, maybe I did it in regular user. Yeah, because I didn't. I was worried that it might make uh, super user uh, permissions, and I didn't want that, which I don't think it would. Run media Seagate drive backup Theta. That's right. Destination home Theta. Oh, that's the other way around. That was when I was bringing everything in. 
It still says there's something wrong with that, and I don't know what it would be. I don't know. I'm going to hit cancel, but now I remember. So I'm going to go put it back like it was. Now I'm going to have to close it and get back to Lucky again. That's what makes, whoops, wrong one. Just click the first one without thinking. I want the second one. Okay. No, there's no profiles in there. Oh, because I've never done this before. Yeah. That's why. I'm going to have to make me a profile to do that from. Okay. Yeah. Because I hadn't tried to do this before. Yeah, because I just got through copying everything from. Okay, back up. Adidas Hot Rod PC. Let's look at it and see if it's. Oh wait, this might work. Well, I think this. Let's look see if I'm right. If this is the one that's. Uh... No, there's. Yeah, there's the remote settings. Okay. Well, I can take. I'm going to copy this and edit it, maybe. Let's see if that would work. Home Theta to, yeah, that would all be right. Yeah, there's that exclude GVFS. And exclude temporary folders. Okay, yeah. Some of that I don't want to exclude. Normal include and remote. I don't want to change that because that was hard to figure out. Home Don SSH authorized keys. Okay. Actually, that was some okay. I need to copy her. I'm going to need her authorized keys if I'm going to be able. To, well, on the new machine, I'll have to make new ones. That's right. Okay. Okay. So, I th you know what? That's getting more and more confusing. I think it'd be easier just to make a new profile. Yeah, I think it will. Okay. <coughs> new. Yeah, I think it'd be simpler to do that. Okay, because there's so many specific settings for that that particular one I had to do. Okay, first thing I want is source home theta home, but I don't want home. I just want home theta here, right? Or do I want both of them? Can't think of any reason why I would want mine. Especially not in, yeah, I'm not in her folder. If I did my own, I'd want to do it in my folder. Uh, I'm not going to exclude anything because I really want to be able to have everything that I could possibly use. Uh, stuff that's extra. There's not going to be, I haven't run it that long to have a lot of extra cache and temporary folders and all that. Now then, normal include. Let's see. So I forget, I want to make sure not delete files on the destination. I don't want to preserve permissions, but I want ownership and times. Okay. I won't bother with the hard links. This is a NTFS. I'm going to say a lot of times that helps to attempt super user activities. The curse into, huh? What did I do that made it? Oh, NTFS. If you say it's NTFS, all that's uh, mute, moot anyway. It won't, it doesn't handle it that way, okay? But I do know I've been having no trouble with reading and writing the, uh, everything from the, uh, you know, after I put them on my backup drive. Like I just, I'm going to make darn sure I don't delete any of those files that are already there. Okay. No remote. Include, normal, include. Okay, so we're going to say. Now this is where we're going to pick it, and when we say directory contents, puts the two stars in the fi it says final pattern, and we want home data. Now even though you don't see the dot directories, you're going to get them anyway. Home theta dot dot everything. That means star star means you're going to get everything. Now hit add. That didn't work. That didn't say home theta. That would be the whole machine. Something went wrong there. OK. 
like a specific directory. You can do a set of directories by pattern and stuff. Uh, what if do this? Now that should do it. That's not looking. I, I expect it to say home theta, not wait. I've already got source home theta. Here's your problem. Cause if I don't hit add, that won't get added. I'm not. I'm not doing my source. I'm doing my uh, where it's going to. Right. Oh no! This is source home theta. I don't understand what it is. Okay, that kind of can just delete out of there. I shouldn't be f fooling with that. I'm confusing myself. Okay, so this is good. This is good. I'm not going to bother with those. Include normal include. That's all I need. If you were going to do this, you would only be doing that on only include. Okay. Remote. All oh, that's good now. Okay. Yeah, this is not instructional. This is me muddling through this stuff, by the way. Bypass warning. Okay. Yeah. Destination. This is what I'm trying to do here. Where's the Seagate drive? Can't see it. It's not showing up. So I'll have to go to... I'm going to see... See if you could find that Seagate drive. Nope. <clears throat> Just by doing a search. I think that's only like search recently used. There's the file system. Run. Let's see. You got to know this to do it this way. Media. I had the hardest time finding. Uh-oh. Min run. Media is not there. Mount? Have they changed it again in Fedora 27? No, they have not. I wonder if they went back to the old way. Media? No. Mount? No. <clears throat> what's the what's the deal, Lee Seal? I know I did this before. Seagate. Let's open this in the regular file manager. I right clicked in it. Didn't come up with what I expected. I guess it's mounted. It says mount volume, but it should already be mounted. There we go. Run media theta. I couldn't find it in there, but I'll cheat. I'll copy this. Cancel. Let's see if it'll let me. Yeah, I can just control V and put it in there. Run media theta Seagate expansion drive. Okay, now hit validate. There's an error. Oh. Task name. I knew I hadn't done that. I saw it as I clicked <coughs> validate. Okay. Not home. Home. See, get expansion drive. I won't try it like that because I think the uh, spaces will. No, I think it jams it all together instead of making spaces in there. You can, I've, I've done that a lot. I just leave those in there and it takes them out for you, but I can't remember if it jams it all together or what. I don't want it all jammed together. Okay, validate. Seem to be okay. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, now. I'm going to do a dry run. I'm going to save that before I lose it. Do a dry run before I do the real thing because, yeah, as you can see, my <coughs> brain is never completely all with it. <coughs> and, uh, quick dry run. Well, it's not going to have a lot to write at all. One thing I'm going to have is whatever changes, a couple changes, and, you know, I know I opened up Thunderbird. 
No errors. All right. Now we'll do the real thing. I'm we'll looking at it one more time. Make sure it is going where I think it should. Oh, it's not going where I want it to. Even though it would have ran just fine, I want to go to... Now it'll take me there. I need to go to Theta's backup. Um, Theta's Hot Rub PC. And directory Theta. That's where I have it. That would have put it on my main drive of my... Uh, I had a feeling. Okay, it seems to be okay. I, I had a feeling there was something wrong there. And that's what it was. Backup Theta Hot Rub PC. Theta. Okay, now it's... Oh, it's already saved. Okay, do another dry run. <clears throat> Maybe that's why it was such a quick dry run because there wasn't anything other file. It wasn't seeing any other files for it to write through. That would have kind of messed things up for me too. It wouldn't have been the end of the world, but it would have mixed her files with mine, and that wouldn't have been good. I have my home Don set. You know, when I the, when I try to get the program uh, files from the programs, I have them going to their own little separate back up but then I have my documents videos so and so all that going to the uh, root directory of the USB okay I was checking my stream Ooh, slamming that mouse around too much okay no errors let's kind of look through I don't know it looks like there may be some files that get written there should be some Okay, now, backing up. Yeah, I believe there's files in all of the. Well, I mean, the machine's been ran enough. There should be lots of changes. Well, I'm backing up cache, but I don't care. I can always manually delete that stuff later. It's simpler to just say, do it all, and then if there's stuff that's extra that you don't want one day, you can just go in there and manually delete them. Sometimes you just never know what it is you might be needing that you didn't back up. Like, uh, like dot ssh uh appreciate you know the keys and all that stuff if i had wasn't about backing up her whole home directory i wouldn't have get those wouldn't have got those her old machine has them well i guess the new one does too because actually the ones i have are probably wrong i've got some kind of error that i didn't quite understand about that when i tried to go you know what i might have been i don't remember what machine i was on i tried to network something and I got this this ain't right so actually I don't want I don't want the private keys from her machine on this machine I only want the public keys that's what I would want yeah so that might have been why I had that weird error that I didn't understand no errors okay 433 megabytes received sent 430 34.33 megabytes received 61.4 kilobytes 6.25 megabytes second total size 42 gigabytes 42.2 gigabytes well i'm not sure what that actually means did it uh write 434 did it only write 61 kilobytes i think it only wrote 61 kilobytes i think that's what it means it went through 400 some odd megabytes but it only wrote those kilobytes which would make sense to what you know the way I've, what i've actually done on this machine that few changes I've made. <coughs> I'll put that back like I would want it if <coughs> <coughs> if it was going to be used. I think this whole uh, operating system is going to have, I'm going to have to just, you know, we'll see, but uh, <coughs> well, it might, I, uh, If I use that ASRock motherboard with a new processor, then I might be able to use this Biosar with the processor that's in this one. So yeah, I, this this operating system might end up working. We'll see. I'm thinking it's all going to just be blown, have to be blown away. We'll see what happens. Of course, I that's if I have a power supply to run this thing. Or actually, I'd rather put it in another box because I don't like this box anyway. Uh, <coughs> I don't like the box much, and I don't like that uh, it has bad uh, bad uh, media card reader on the front. It's I think it got shorted out and blown out because I found a bunch of pins 
uh, vents and touching each other, so I'm sure it's shorted out. Probably shorted the whole thing out. Lucky it didn't. Actually, it could have damaged the original motherboard, but it didn't. Uh, well, I did found it long after I put this board in it, though, when it didn't damage it <clears throat> that I know of. <clears throat> All the USB works. And that's what that, those are actually plugged into the USB headers on the board. Even though they're not USB, actual USB, they run through the USB section of the board. I'm getting me a cough drop. Okay, let me think before I just, <clears throat> I'm fixing to shut it down, but let me think here. Um, I don't want to open up any programs. That would change things, but I don't think there's much sense. Yeah, no programs need to be transferred or anything like that. If the letter used the Dell, it's got, I think it's already got all the programs that are needed. All I have to do is uh, get to her a profile that's ready to use. <clears throat> so it'll actually be perhaps less confusing. Well, she doesn't look around the programs anyway. She just uses these I set up here at the top for her. But, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, I'll deal with all this rest of this later after I get her machine, what I, what I might do with these parts and this op. We're not, I can't even use this operating system anymore or not. It's for door 26, so. I haven't seen it happen. Well, I guess, I guess it didn't have, I think it was Fedora 24 when they started making Fedora, they call it a rolling distro where it'll automatically upgrade to the next distro, you know, each year. So I haven't seen that happen yet. But uh, this is 26, and I don't run it a lot, so it. But I haven't got a notice saying it's time to upgrade to Fort Door 27. Maybe they're not doing that yet, though, because it's. I think they would be, because I think 28 may be coming out this summer. I don't know. We'll see. We'll worry about that later. Okay, that's all copied. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up. Well, I'll be very careful. This thing could crash at any moment here. Well, I'll open up Crusader and look on the drive. There. 318. Yeah, see, that's today. Is this the 8? 3818, yeah, that's today. So, yeah, that's where it all went to. So, I should have everything. SSH. Oh, there's no, um, there's no private key in here anyway. Known host. Theta SSH and then Theta SHH pub. Well, no, that, I think the one without any file extension is the one that's the private key. Well, I'm going to, what do I want? Not on this machine? I don't believe I ran that on this machine. If I delete it by mistake, it actually will do less harm than if I leave it. So I don't want that on there. The, that one would make me uh, able to con commun you know, talk to her old machine if I ever wanted to. But log in without a password is what it would do. Okay. So let me get out of here before I end up, this thing decides to crash while I'm in it like this. So I don't want my Seagate drive to be plugged in if it crashes. Unmount. <clears throat> it's got me nervous now. <laughs> Wait for it. I started to say, oh no, it's going to crash, but that was Fedora 14 that did that. It's not unbounded yet. Oh, I clicked on mount. There's no safely remove. That's weird. You got to be careful with these NTFS drives. They will break. The file systems will break, and you'll have to be trying fixing them. 
I don't know what's going on, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just shut the machine down, then I'll know it's unmounted. Okay. I don't know what was happening there. It doesn't really matter if you do it. Rem when I do it remotely like that, it, it, it forces to shut Team Viewer down instead of being closed normally, but doesn't I haven't had it break it I've done it I don't know how many times without thinking about it it just seems I forget that I'm on remote desktop when it works good like that or forget that that matters you know that it could matter I'm plugging it back into my machine now all right back on my cameras for a minute here if I can click right Okay, um, look at my preview. I think what I'm going to do, I need a break. And I think I'm going to take me a little break for a little while. And then come back. And uh, what time is it? You know, it's not super late, but it's almost 7. I should have enough time to get started on... Uh, Bringing those backups, making her username and bringing those backups into this laptop. Okay. Yep, I think that's it. I think I'm going to go ahead and go now. And uh, we'll come back in a little while, hopefully, if nothing ever else stops me from being able to do what I plan here this evening. All right, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.